Hello and welcome to lecture four of Math 2R03. Uh, in today's lecture, we're going to look can fin finish up our discussion of section 1.3 on subspaces. And I also want to spend a little bit of time talking about how to write proofs because a big part of your this course is writing up proofs for linear algebra. So I wanted to spend uh, a little bit of time discussing this important tool. So. But first, we'll talk about subspaces. And the big thing that we're going to introduce today is how to do a direct sum, or what a direct sum is. OK, so just a quick recap of where we are. So far, we've introduced what a vector space is. We've introduced subspaces. And we've talked about sums. Okay. And one theme in this course that you'll be you'll see over and over again is what we want to do is we want to decompose vector spaces into subspaces, okay? And these subspaces are going to maybe tell us something about our original vector space that we started with. Now, one thing that you might think that a good way of doing this is to use sums, right? Because last time we introduced the sum of a collection of sets, and we saw that each of these u1, um, if they were subspaces, then the sum of it is also a subspace. Now, the one thing that we have to overcome, though, if we were trying to decompose our vector space, is we want to somehow overcome what's happening in the next example, that somehow sums sometimes are not unique. So here's an example of what I mean right here. So let's say we're looking at a vector space over F3. So we're looking at all three tuples. You might want to visualize this as R3. And U1 is the subspace of all X and Y, where the X and Y can be free, but the last coordinate is 0. And U2 is the set of all uh, Y and Z in the second and third coordinate, but the, zero, the first coordinate is 0. Now, it's not too hard to check that if you take the sum of these two vector uh, subspaces, you actually get the whole space itself. Okay, So if you follow the definition for sums, you uh, will get the whole space. Okay, So you can check that this is true. But the other thing that we want to highlight, and this is kind of motivate what we're going to do for some of today's lecture, is that there's something interesting that's going on here. The zero vector. Well, the zero vector is inside of u1, and it's inside of u2, right? So it's 0, 0, 0, plus 0, 0, 0. This is an element in u1 plus u2. But at the same time, we also have the vector 0, 1, 0 is inside of u1, because I can let x equal to 0 and y equals 1. And in the second uh, subspace u2, I have 0, negative 1, 0. This is also inside of u1 and u2. So what we have here is we have two ways to write the vector 0, 0, 0 in u1 plus u2. Now, when we're trying to decompose something, Normally, we would want to break it down into pieces where we would have to take something from the first part, something from the second part, and the third part. And you want to be able to only do this exactly once, one way to break it up. So we don't actually, we need to add some extra conditions here because right now we're not seeing this unique breaking down of elements. Okay, so the way that we get that around that is we have to introduce a new definition, which kind of adds some more um, restrictions on what we mean uh, in terms of our sum. So just, just taking arbitrary, arbitrary sums is not going to be enough. So suppose that we have a collection of subspaces, then u1 up plus up to um is a direct sum if each element Okay, in uh, in our direct sum or in our sum can be re can be written uniquely as a sum of u1 plus u2 up to um with ui in the set ui. So what we wanted is to kind of 
get around what we were seeing up in here. So we're looking for a sum where when we take something in the sum, in the sum it can only have come by building it by in one particular way, where the first thing came from u1, the second thing came from u2, and so on. And when, in order to kind of stress that we have a direct sum, we use this notation. We put a plus with a circle around it. So this will mean a direct sum. So as an example, the above example is not a direct sum since we can can express zero 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 in two different ways. Okay, so this is u one plus u two is not a direct sum. So that's one example, but let me just give you an example of something that is a direct sum. Okay, so here we have our vector space V and it's gonna be F2. If you'd like to visualize it, think of R2. U will be all the vectors that have the form X zero, where, so the second coordinate is zero, and W will be all those pairs where the first coordinate is zero. And this is a direct sum. Why and why is that? Since, we have that a comma b is in u plus w implies that a plus b is equal to x comma zero plus y comma zero. So we wanna see if this is, uh, can be done only in one way, right? So a comma b is in the direct sum, implies that a b has, can be written as something from the u plus something in the w, right? So that's, for some x in f and y in f, right? Because this guy here, the first guy is in u and this guy is in w. But now when we look at this, but this can only happen if a is equal to x and b is equal to y. So there's only one way in which we can write a, b, right? So a, b can be written as a plus zero plus zero plus b. And this is the only way I can express a, b as a sum of something in u and as something in something, as, and as something as w, okay? So what we have here then is, you. Uh, so kind of leading into where I'm gonna go next is that you can actually prove something a little bit stronger is that u plus b is a direct sum. So this is a direct sum and it's actually gonna be all of F2. And why is that? Well, it's clear that u plus, the direct sum of u plus w is inside of F2 because it's a subspace of F2. And if if you take any pair inside of F2, then A0 is in U and 0B is in W. So AB, which is equal to A0 plus 0B is in the direct sum. Okay, so we've expressed uh, our F squared as a direct sum of two different subspaces. And this is kind of the idea that we want to kind of use throughout this course. We've decomposed F2 into a direct sum of smaller subspaces. So we'll take a pause here and we'll look at some more properties of direct sums in a couple minutes.